Sherlock Holmes, your brother Mycroft sent his regards. Oh, how touching. Perhaps one day he'll do it in person. Look, I just tell you what they tell me. And you've done it admirably. Good show. I'm confident that with a bit of effort, one day you might even send regards to the King himself. Goodbye. Wait, no. I haven't told you yet. Of course, let me guess. Mission, urgent, fate of the nation, etc. Mycroft busy with his tea parties, is he? Right. So, one of our agents has been involved in an accident and can't send us the confidential document she's obtained. We need you to go and ensure the job is completed. So, yes, urgent mission, fate of the nation. So, Mycroft needs another errand boy. And you are presumably too incompetent? Oh, don't give me that look. I'll go and check on your agent. Send Mycroft my regards. The details are in this note, Mr. Holmes. If I were you, I'd start to take this more seriously. Lives are at stake. Nothing ever changes. I'm pulled back and forth between my brothers playing all their silly games. Hey, at least mine are fun. Don't you have an assignment to work on? Do not postpone this matter, Mr. Holmes. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I'm really sorry, but I can't help you. Try asking someone else. Sir, what do you think you're doing? Officer. Oh, I know you. You're the clever chap that cracked that Palazzo del Luzzo case, eh? Well, presuming there has not been another murder since, then yes, it is I. I'm here to investigate the accident. You don't mind if I examine the scene? You're too late. Case closed. It was no accident. The rickshaw driver deliberately ran that poor woman over, and I'm taking him into custody. Oh, well, if that's the case, then my examination of the scene can hardly interfere with your brilliant work, Officer... Huxley. Well, if you want to play detective, go ahead. But stay away from my business, all right? How do you turn a simple accident into a tasty case? Add some spies! An impact to the back of the head caused severe damage. Her death was probably instant. Cordona's true horror revealed. Behold, the killer curb. The dress looks generally neat and tidy. Any staining must have been from the accident. This pendant looks like it may contain something. Let's see. Takes two to tango. I'll find a use for it. Cleaning the houses of rich men by day and preserving England's secrets by night. My friend, you know you're in trouble, right? But all this can go away for a small thing. Oh, damn crooked cops. Come on, concentrate so we can stop him before he arrests the driver. Always take care when walking beneath balconies. Sir, I've heard the same not my fault lie a thousand times. I wasn't born yesterday. How do you turn a simple accident into a tasty case? Add some spies! From the position of the body, we can deduce that Mycroft's agent walks down the street from the east. The rickshaw's tracks show that the vehicle was coming from the south. The 
rickshaw gained speed down the slope of the road and was going too fast to stop for a pedestrian. But, Sherry, it would be impossible to miss a rickshaw speeding downhill. It was as fast as a racehorse. Unless something distracts you. A sudden loud noise caught the agent's attention and they stepped into the road without looking. It was all an accident. John, no one is immune to chance. Such synchrony of events would be very difficult to contrive artificially. No such thing as coincidence. I bet there's a killer mastermind behind this. Or a team of killers. Ooh, a secret global rickshaw conspiracy. How do you turn a simple accident into a tasty case? Add some spies! Upon examination of the scene, I have concluded that the smash of the flower pot distracted the woman. She didn't notice the oncoming rickshaw. After stepping into its path, she was knocked to the ground and died after hitting her head on the curb. It was most likely an accident. Oh, that's just your imagination. The facts say otherwise. Well, fact. There are no wheel tracks on the woman's body, so the rickshaw could not have run over her. Fact, you are blackmailing an innocent man. Didn't I tell you to stay out of my business? You're lucky there's a crowd. So the man can go free. Oh, thank you, Officer Huxley, for your excellent decision. All right. The rickshaw puller can leave, but he better not show his face again. That goes twice for you, Mr. White Knight. Goodbye, sir. Glad you didn't leave that poor chap alone. The truth must be told, even if it damns as often as it saves. Today it spared a driver and denounced an officer. Tomorrow, perhaps the opposite. So, what have we learned today? Don't let anyone take you for a ride. One bed, one table, and one horrible scent of decay which someone tried to cover with perfume. A typical safe house for my cross spies. Ah, uh, the espionage life where at any moment you could die. Of boredom. Ah, uh, the espionage life where at any moment you could die of boredom. Being a secret agent isn't easy. A brand new model. Must say, perfectly maintained. She took good care of it. Whoever broke in clearly does not appreciate lockpicks. Whoever broke in. The documents may have been stowed in here, but they're gone now. Reminds me of the mess in your room, John. Fake passports. I guess nothing is a crime if you're working for the Crown. I've always wanted to try something new.
brute force intrusion rather than a stealthy sneak in. The wax is still warm. Primitive, but efficient at breaking windows. Sloppy work, unprofessional. Someone was in a hurry. Mycroft's documents were stolen. The thief entered through the broken window not long ago. What are we waiting for? Let's search the backyard and track him down. They are in such a hurry that they cut themselves. Let's keep looking for tracks, Sherry. We can't be far behind him. They injured themselves pretty seriously. Look at the amount of blood. Does it mean they were waiting here for something? The police patrol schedule sends officers along here regularly. Our thief wasn't waiting. They were hiding. The blood trail stops here. They must have finally bandaged the wound. in a hurry, and women always pay the consequences. The thief must be somewhere around here. I can almost smell him. The thief must be somewhere around here. I can almost smell him. Piece of advice. Next time you try to steal from an agent of the United Kingdom, don't leave a trail of blood behind you. Try using a lockpick. So it seems this is it. You found me. And now I have no choice. No choice at all. He told me to give you this letter. So where are the documents, and who is he? Huh. Piece of advice. When someone tells you to mind your own business, Listen. Oh, Sherry. What horror could he have been facing that suicide was the better option? It's a grim augury indeed. There's something bigger brewing, John. We should inspect the poor man for any leads. Whoa! Sherry! He just... Damn. <sighs> Poor chap. He managed to bandage the wound properly. A strange act of self-preservation for a man on his way to suicide. Expensive clothes. Pretty worn out, though. A family insignia. Typical nobleman fashion. Old and made of silver. Not expensive, but might be an heirloom. Take a photo of this poor bugger. Better to give Mycroft something rather than nothing. I suppose it may help in understanding the situation. Poor oh, chap.
May I ask you something? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Alas, that's a terrible blow for the office. I'd better pass on your report immediately. Thank you for your service. The accident doesn't look so accidental anymore, does it? I think you might be right, John. I feel like someone is leading us by the nose. First time I've encountered such a devious mind. I suspect not the last. I'm still thinking about that man on the bridge. Extra! Extra! Suicide claims another! A young man has leapt to his end in broad daylight from the Rolling Bricks Bridge! The cheapest news on the island. Thank you. Mr. Holmes, your brother sent me. Oh, terrific. Let me guess. A mission of global importance, a nation forever in my debt? <laughs> Let's get this over with. Hmm. I see the Holmes demeanor is genetic. Well then. This island is home to a seemingly innocuous astronomy professor named Jacob Haring. In high society, though, he's rather more infamous. He possesses a collection of scandalous materials that could compromise almost every aristocrat in Britain. And Haring recently got his hands on information that would expose one of our men. He agreed to return it, so long as he was paid a visit by a Holmes. And Mycroft was too busy watching the crown jewels? Fine. I'll visit Mr. Haring the moment I can spare the time. Just wait. The man is a loner, but a cunning one. This invitation implies he has something in mind for you. So be careful. And remember, I was never here. We never met. You're never too old to play hopscotch, but are you brave enough to play our hard version on the stairs of the watchtower? Boom, Sheriff. I found a corpse. Don't you think it's strange we always end up in situations like this? Seek, and ye shall find. John, do you know any songbirds? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, partridges, birds of paradise, uh, chickens... Uh, okay, I might just be hungry. Another day, another death. Do you think we're just lucky? It would not be easy to cut this hat in two. Whoever is responsible is a master of their craft. Pheasant feathers. They're rare here. <laughs> Judging by his expression, a painful and unexpected death. His hand is clinging to his chest, but he has no stab or gunshot wounds. Pattern 1796 Light Cavalry Sabre. It looks like he died of natural causes, but something doesn't add up. So, the victim is Professor Jacob Haring himself. That's no great surprise. London Fencing Club, 1876. A man with a plan. 
Admittedly, not a great plan if you write on paper exactly when you will do your illegal business, but a plan nonetheless. Completely healthy and ready to take part in the fencing competition. Stamped with Mr. Haring's personal seal. This was opened carefully. One presumes that empty safes are not some hip new trend. A safe behind a painting. Classic. If you had an enormous collection of blackmail material, where would you keep it? Oh, <laughs> nice try, Sherry. But I ain't telling you nothing. Old, but still deadly. Hmm. Two sabers used to be mounted here. The clock's hands aren't moving. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Mr. Haring was not one to deviate from his plans, and yet, on this day, he only managed to answer his mail and never did get to repair the clock. The visitor knew his schedule. They entered the house between 3.30 and 4 p.m., that's exactly when Haring would be checking his blackmail collection. When Jacob saw the intruder, his fencing reflexes kicked in. He lunged left to the sabers, wrenched one off the wall, and attacked the visitor. But in the middle of the assault, Mr. Haring is struck by a heart attack, and the professor only manages to cut off the hat of the intruder. The visitor stole Haring's entire blackmail collection and wrote a message on the blackboard. Before we go chasing the intruder, should we try to confirm the cause of the professor's death? I'd hate for him to be a red Harry. Half empty. Or for John, half full. A strong, rotten smell. Uncharacteristic for tea. Totally empty. Even John couldn't argue with that.
Digitalis is usually used to cure heart disease, but every drug is a poison if you get the dosage wrong. Or right, if that's your goal. Seems like we have fun neighbours, eh, Sherry? We should introduce ourselves. He doesn't have an invitation to the club. Get him, boys! I'm coming for you. No more crime for you until next month. Don't bother moving. You've lost. I can overcome the brute now. Oh, ah, ow. The snuffs, give him the pepper snuff. It's all yours now. Go for it. Too simple. The snuff's ready. <laughs> Take a wreck. Give him the pepper snuff. Time to knock this guy out. Excuse me. Don't cry. The snuff's ready. Can overcome the brute. It won't work this way. I couldn't miss the party. I'm coming for you. Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. Don't bother moving. The snuff's ready. Time to knock this guy out. Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. All right, fella. I give up. Take me into custody. You have nothing on me anyway. So I'll walk out the station right after you do. Excellent job catching this crook, sir. His name is Lucky Joe, and as it happens, someone with influence was after him too. You did them a favor. I just solved the mystery, officer. If a criminal appears in my path, it merely affirms my deductions are sound. Either way, you'll be pleased to know that an anonymous tip has fingered Lucky Joe as being involved in the murder of a famous professor. We have photographs and witness statements. Not so Lucky Joe is headed straight to the gallows. Someone served him to us on a silver platter. Interesting. Well, 
As a vital ally in the arrest of a wanted murderer, you couldn't possibly object to me interviewing him. Well, vital, y yes, I... No, of, of course. Uh, go ahead. Lucky Joe is just behind this door, waiting for you. Looks like those little birdies won't sing for a while, Sherry. You! Haven't you made my day bad enough? Get out! The police received an anonymous tip. Someone saw you entering Professor Jacob Haring's house. They have photos. You're in trouble. <laughs> I didn't even touch the old fool. This old business was a setup from the beginning. You broke into the house at the exact time Jacob Haring had his safe open and his collection of blackmail materials out. Perfect timing to steal the lot. Ah, <laughs> that's circumstantial at best. Alas, the professor turned out to be less feeble than you expected. He pulled a saber from the wall and nearly took your head off. But lo, the vigor evaporated and all at once he fell to the floor, grasping his chest as if his heart itself had given up. That's... that's exactly what happened. And that's why I'll be out of this reeking cell by morning, once the coroner has done his business. Hmm, unlikely. You claim somebody set you up. If so, they will ensure that you're hanged. We both want to know who is truly behind this, so tell me the whole story. It may yet save your life. Oh, blast. All right, what do you want to know? So, you broke into Professor Haring's study and stole the blackmail materials. What did you do with them? Do you like jokes? My humor tends toward the dry and bitter. Then you will love this one. As I fled Haring's place with the documents, a pickpocket snatched the folder from me on the street. I was played from the beginning, beaten at my own game. They made a joke of me and the Robins, and now I await the gallows. Ha! Ha ha ha! Oh, you're right, it was a good joke. But now, things begin to make sense. Haring's blackmail collection was hardly public knowledge. It stands to reason that whoever informed you of his existence must be who set you up. Yes, obviously. But I've never seen his face, nor do I know his name. I received a note at El Palazzo de Luso that gave me the address of Jacob Haring. It was signed with one letter. M. I cannot believe such an established gang leader would personally engage in burglary simply because he received a letter. It was not just a letter. I received something else with the note. A file. On me. And a bloody detailed one at that. I'm not sure if it was from Haring's own collection, but it contained things that could bury me and the entire damn Robins. I burned the file in a heartbeat, but the note warned of others like it in Haring's safe. I needed to retrieve them, and got lucky. Lucky? Why? The note said that by being there at a very precise time, I'd find that safe opened. And it was right. Lucky Joe. You've been lucky too long. You're in the hands of the boys in blue now, and I shan't interfere. So you're the copper's pet dog after all. Figures. Should have seen it coming from a ponce like you. You and the Robins have been shamelessly preying on people for years. You've eluded arrest until now, but perhaps this will suffice as justice. I did not kill Haring. You think they'll hang me for... what? A failed attempt to steal from a blackmailer? Ha! <laughs> All you've done today is make yourself a new enemy. Oh, drat. And here I was, hoping we could be friends. Oh well. Goodbye, Lucky Joe. I have connections, you... you maggot. Oh, you will regret this when I'm out of here. You're done, you hear it? Done! Fear not, Joe. I will prove you didn't kill Professor Haring. What? Then you better do it fast. Per his schedule, Professor Haring had tea with a guest not long before you arrived. The tea in Haring's teapot was dosed with digitalis. A large dose of such a drug, coupled with physical exertion, can cause cardiac arrest. So if the old man hadn't attacked me? He may have lived, yes. But it wasn't you who killed him. 
The real murderer is the one that poisoned the professor and set you up. I'll make sure the police know it. Yeah, you may save my bacon. Oh, I wouldn't sing a victory song just yet. I believe they're preparing for a conversation with you on many subjects, like the Robins. Ha! <laughs> I can handle those fools. I thought you were the copper's pet. But you have character those bloodthirsty mongrels lack. I respect that. Make no mistake, Joe. We are not friends. Should we meet again under different circumstances? Well, you know my character. Hey, you. Mutton shunter. Come up here. Come on, is it bring your idiot to work day at the station? <laughs> we have serious business to discuss. put in cage. The entirety of the Robins gang, including their leader, Lucky Joe, finally arrested. The cheapest news on the island. Thank you. Oh, is that you, Mr. Holmes? Please, come in. Now that the police have finished their investigation, Il Palazzo del Lusso has finally reopened. We are delighted to welcome you back, Mr. Holmes. How can I help you, sir? Good day. I'm looking for room 227. An acquaintance of mine has invited me to visit him. Oh, Mr. Holmes, what a delight to see you again. Professor Malice told me he was expecting someone, but I didn't know it would be you. 227 is upstairs and to the left. He said you should spare him the trouble and let yourself in. Here's the key. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to see you. Professor Malice. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, I'd best not keep him waiting, thank you. Room 227 is upstairs and to the left. Sherry, this feels awfully like someone has set a mouse trap and we're walking right into it. I have it under control, John. If you insist on going up there, promise me you'll be cautious. Really, Sherry, I don't like this. Please. Room 227. This is it. See? Neither a trapdoor nor a self-firing gun. Any sign of the stolen documents? family photo of the man who jumped off the bridge. Pity. Everybody has pressure points. What would happen if I pushed yours? How many more dossiers like this does M possess? Mysteries of Sirius B by Jacob Haring. Used, then discarded. Like everyone in his path. These people were not colleagues or co-conspirators, they were just implements M used to get what he wanted. Any sign of the stolen documents? What did it say, Sherry? That I failed, John. He's gone, tore through Cordona like a hurricane and left us to sift through the wreckage. Nelson's Monument in Trafalgar Square, London. I am watching you. The hairs on my neck just stood up. Extensive handwritten notes on Sirius B. It appears M was studying up. A dossier on General Garnet Wolseley, but now empty. A dossier... A dossier on... I recognise this seal from Jacob Haring's mail. He left behind only what he wanted us to find infuriating.
clean champagne flute. The first move has been made. Anglo-Egyptian war looms. The champagne bottle is uncorked, yet still chilled and bubbly. The gall of this man. Someone's celebrating a victory, and I'm not sure it's us. M is celebrating and wants us to know it. Mycroft's agent. So M did orchestrate her accident with unimaginable precision. Jacob Haring, just a pawn in a complex chess match. The position of naval forces in the Mediterranean this M has his sights set on bigger things. A marked map of Cordona. We've visited most of these locations recently. All these thefts, exactions, and deaths are the intricately entwined pieces of a greater plan, and we fail to influence it in the slightest. We're too late, Sherry. M set this all up for us, knowing by the time we found it, he would already have left Cordona. No, no, there must be something I've missed. We can still catch him. There's nothing else here. It's over. You read his letter. He laid out this makeshift museum to taunt you. Don't give him the satisfaction. I will not cede defeat. I will treat this threat with the seriousness it deserves, which is to say, my absolute attention. Then you were giving him the win, Sherlock. Have you considered you might be out of your depth? He was sitting here, in this very room, spinning his web around Cordona and beyond. Manipulating and murdering people, using the Mediterranean as his playground like some sodding Napoleon of crime. Are you trying to suggest? I am not suggesting. I am stating outright that he is toying with you and you are too arrogant to avoid the bait. Sherlock! We stumbled into the lion's den. Now we must slow down. Be smart, and make sure we get to walk out alive. When a fly gets caught in a spider's web, it twitches. But the more it does so, the more it traps itself. You are twitching too much, John. Do not mistake my rage for recklessness. Do not mistake disappointment for desperation. The spider does not yet know what it caught. He knows full well. The man makes no mistakes, Sherlock. Incorrect. He just made one. He caught my attention. That's what I'm saying. You are behaving exactly how I'd expect. He wants you to come after him. He knows you can't resist the game. You need to face the facts. You lost. You were outwitted and he got away. Don't fall for it again. The smartest thing we can do now is lick our wounds and tell Mycroft everything. So what do you suggest? I know you want to catch him on your own, but it's time to face the facts. You lost. The smartest thing we can do now is lick our wounds and tell Mycroft everything. Mycroft? Now you really are being hysterical. Look around you, Sherlock. He's stealing secrets from the Crown, toying with navies, fomenting war. You cannot catch him alone. We will need all your brother's connections to stop this madman before he does worse. First M rubs my face in failure, and now you mock me too. Ask Mycroft for help. I would rather eat glass. So exhaustingly stubborn, Sherry. How many times has he come to you to solve a matter nobody else could? What's the difference? The stakes, John. If we involve Mycroft, we might as well give M the key to dismantling the whole intelligence service. Who are you lying to, Sherlock? M knows you're too proud to turn to your brother. He's counting on you two not cooperating. I do not need his help. This matter is mine, and mine alone. Fine. Let us hope you don't have to eat your words. Or glass. M is gone. For now, best to focus on the reason we came to Cordona in the first place. On that matter, you are probably right. And, John, when I said alone, I... I didn't mean without you. I'm with you, Sherry. To try and ensure you don't get yourself killed. I appreciate it. Now, shall we? Sherry, 
Let's return to our own matters. M thinks he can anticipate my decisions, and for now, I shall let him believe it. But fear not, John. When opportunity strikes, so will I. This is not about you and your ego, Sherlock. There are other lives at risk. I am well aware, John, but Mycroft is not the answer. For the Crown, criminals like M are just as easily seen as assets or allies should their crimes align with one's political agenda. I will not involve my brother and risk this man walking free. I cannot allow it. You're fooling yourself, Sherlock. You think M doesn't have a folder on you and Mycroft? He's counting on you two not cooperating. It's obvious. I am simply ensuring that when M and I cross paths again, it will be on my terms. Neither his nor Mycroft's. That is how I will win. This is a mistake, and one day you'll pay for it. But I know you too well to argue any longer. M is gone. For now, best to focus on the reason we came to Cordona in the first place. On that matter, you are probably right. But John, I need you on my side. I am on your side, Sherry. To make sure you don't get yourself killed. I appreciate it. Shall we? Perhaps you're right. He could be anywhere in Europe, and the only practical way to find him is with Mycroft's eyes and ears. <sighs> I shall endeavor to tell my brother the whole story as soon as I can stomach another humiliation. Good. Thank you. And it is not humiliation. It is humility. For now, we need to put this wretched affair behind us. M has gone. Best to focus on the reason we came to Gordona in the first place. You're right. I'm glad you were here. I'm always looking out for you, brother. Thank you, John. Now, shall we? Sherry, let's return to our own matters.